Hey guys, Motocon not here, and today we're going to be replacing the brake pads on a Ford F-150. This happens to be a 2011. It can go from 2009 all the way up, uh, or even lower. If yours looks like this, they're pretty much all similar, maybe have differences, but this is a 2011 vehicle. And we're going to start by taking the, uh, make sure you jack it up and do not rely only on a jack. You have to put a jack stand. Stands are for holding weight. Jacks are for just lifting weight. They have pistons. They can fail. A jack stand is just a piece of metal. If you do it right, it won't fail. Okay, so take the wheel off. That's 20, 21 millimeters. At least mine are. This is the um, six stud. Sometimes you have the seven stud or, you know, or the... Uh, uh, eight studs depends. Uh, they may be different, but these are uh, 21 millimeter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the wheel a little bit so the caliper is this way. And we're only replacing the pads. Um, <clears throat> it's good to do the rotors too if they're scored and everything. These should be replaced. But right now I'm going to. This is my personal vehicle. I'm just going to replace these uh, just to show you how you do it because I, I didn't get the rotors yet. But if you just want to do the brake pads, that's what this video is about. All right, now we have two bolts, 13 millimeter, 13 millimeter. I'm gonna take those off, get a screwdriver in here, pry it, take the caliper off. Okay, and put the caliper on top of here. Don't let the, the uh, rubber hose hang. Just don't wanna do that. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, like so. And what we're gonna wanna do, we're gonna wanna push the pistons in, so you're gonna need a C-clamp, like something like this. All right. To push the pistons in so this is a dual caliber a dual piston caliber so we can put like this and we can put the uh, C clamp on here and then on here and squish it all the way in there but now before we do that you go up to the master cylinder and you take the uh, cover cap off and now what you and now you're gonna see the um, brake fluid go up, and when you're done with the brakes, we're gonna pump them to make them tight again before we go for a ride. You do not touch the level of the brakes. The only way, if you do that and you top it off, when the brakes get low, the uh, sensor won't know that um, the brakes are low because there's a, a, a float, electronic float in here, electronic sensor that senses how much brake fluid is in. When it's low, it puts the light on, so you, you know your brakes need to be changed instead of them grinding. So never touch, never top off the fluid. Okay, like so. And you do it slow. You do it slow. Give the uh, the fluid a chance to get, go back into the lines. You see that? Until it's nice and flush, and then you just take it off. And these pads were shot. Look at this. All cracked from heat. You know. This one. Yeah, no good. No good. That's why I'm going to replace the uh, the rotor. And if you have, when you hit your brakes and you hear a, a grinding metal to metal noise, you have to go outside and look and to see, I'll show you one of them that you can see the difference. You can see metal to metal. What that means is that that the braking material is went all the way down to nothing and this b b backing plate is metal. So that metal to metal over here, you're hearing that, 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 scraping noise and once that happens you have to replace the rotor it's already gone don't cut them just replace them all right because if they're warped already when you hit the brakes if it starts pulsating they're already warped from being thick thick so when you cut them they're going to warp faster and you just don't do that now it's always a good idea to always check to make sure that they look the same all right You know, make sure they're the same. Everything looks pretty much good. And notice that some of these say inner right hand, inner left hand, and the outers, they don't mind. Make sure, like the passenger side is the right hand side of the vehicle. Left hand side is the driver's side of the vehicle. So if you have them that have this mark, just make sure. Well, right now we're doing the passenger side. So it'll be the inner right hand and one of the outers. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is install new hardware. And basically these just pull off, well, not like that, but they just pry up, the old ones. All right, and what I like to do is just clean off these with a little wire brush. 
like this, just, you know, any kind of rust. You don't want no rust on here or any kind, you know, build up because it's going to make the pads tight and bind. So you just want them as clean as possible. All right. Regardless, if you, let's say if you have rust and you put the new, um, the new sliders on there, it doesn't really matter because now it's going to be tight from here to here and it's going to be too tight. So you want it the way the manufacturer intended it. All right. We just clean them up and just install the new ones. It's simple. The fatter clip, see the little one? And the, the little one goes towards the uh, rotor and the fat one goes like that. So basically, you put it in first and then it clips in over here. But I'm going to clean it up right now. So if you have a little problem with them, sometimes they're really tight. You put the back in first and just take a screwdriver and just, you know, put it in here and just twist it a little bit while you're pushing it down and they clip right in, especially the top ones. All right, you want them nice and flush. So... When you put the brake pad in, I'll show you what it's supposed to. All right, goes in nice there and nice. You see, it's not so tight, not so not so loose. Nice. That's how you want to do it, like that. And also the slide pins, just make sure they're okay. This caliper is new, you can see that, but um, just make sure that they go in and out nice and nice and smooth. These I'm not gonna touch. Um, there's really not that many miles on it, but anyhow, you know, if you want, you could take them out and lube them with a brake uh, grease, okay? But mine are good. And we'll just put the pads on. Also, in, I install with no grease. You don't put no grease on the sliders. Keep everything dry. Grease attracts dirt, grime, and everything like that, and you really don't need it. I mean, you probably don't know, but if you get a brand new car from the factory, it's not gonna have grease on those. And when you install, make sure that these sliders, you see, don't put them like, have to be where they don't hit anything. You don't want it to be installed crooked. All right, you just put the sliders, there's usually a slot that it'll go nice and flush. So when you tighten it, all right, it won't turn. This one, see it has a flat spot. You want the flat spot on the bottom of the caliber itself while you're tightening it. And you torque these bolts to 27 foot pounds. Okay, this is on a, a 2011 Ford F 150 Super Crew. So yours may vary. I don't like giving torque specs all the time, but if you're working on the same vehicle, they're 27 foot pounds. All right. And then basically it's done. All right, just gonna put the wheel back on and do the other side. Okay, then you uh, put the, the uh, wheel, not 100% on the ground, but enough that you can turn and torque the bolts. 150 foot pounds in a star pattern all right like that and then you put the wheel down and you're done and what you're going to do before you do anything you're going to get in the truck and you're going to pump the brakes all right until they get rock hard then you start the truck up and you come over here and make sure that it's in between the minimum and the maximum now let's assume you did all brand new brakes all brand new rotors and you pumped all the brakes everything is nice and bled and everything's fine it should be at the maximum line and that's it not further than that because as i said as the brakes wear all right the, the uh, fluid goes into the brake lines more and more because the the, uh, the pads are wearing down and as soon as it gets to a certain amount it's going to throw the light now assuming let's say you just did the front and the backs are worn you you put it up to the full mark again now it's gonna go down, the backs are gonna grind and it's still gonna be in the safe zone and it's not gonna throw light because you messed up the uh, messed up the calculation of fluid. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So as long as you, let's say, if you just do the front brakes and you leave the back alone, as long as you're in between the minimum maximum mark, you're fine. All right, you put your cover on, make sure it's tight and you're good to go. All right, now, a, a word of caution, I always do this with, um, uh, brake videos or steering videos or suspension videos because if you're not too familiar with this you can mess something up and it can, it can you know it can cause a, a serious accident or whatever so if, you, if you're not comfortable doing this I always leave a disclaimer have a professional do it all right motor car nut please subscribe hit that like button any question pertaining to the video leave it below I answer all my questions and try to get everybody back on the road. If you learned something today, save you some money, I would appreciate a donation to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.